Hey friends, uh, today's video is a little bit different and this is actually one that I did not expect to make. <laughs> uh, but per the request of someone in this industry who I got to meet at conference this year uh, and who I care about and some comments from other folks, here we are. I would like to talk about the book The Piercing Bible and why in its current state and iteration I do not suggest it. So The Piercing Bible is a book that was written by Elaine Angel and the original was written many years ago and it basically had information about all sorts of different piercings, anatomy, technique, things like that. It was designed to be a piercer's bible. Um, the original print of it was very very outdated and it had a lot of really bad piercing techniques and a lot of really bad advice and a lot of really bad information and it is not something that people should be learning from. Unfortunately, uh, people still do. That being said, an updated version of it was released, I want to say like a year or two ago, and since then it's gotten a lot of sales and a lot of people purchase it and it's always something that people jump to suggest when folks talk about wanting to get into the industry or learn about piercing and things like that. The new one is updated with much better information, much better technique. There's still a lot of stuff that I think is not uh, not the best, but it is very updated. Um, that being said, I still really don't recommend this book uh, and would not suggest purchasing it. Now the author Elaine Angel is a prolific body piercer who has been doing this since the gauntlet days and has undoubtedly been a huge influence on the piercing industry and done a lot of amazing, fantastic, wonderful things for the industry. She was also for a time period married to Buck Angel, a well-known porn star uh, and trans man. And Buck is, uh, if you are involved in the trans community at all, you're aware, uh, very problematic uh, and has a lot of problematic viewpoints and opinions. Um, and you know, trans people are not a monolith. Uh, so it is unsurprising that Buck and Elaine did eventually divorce. And divorce can be a very tricky, very difficult time period. And it can be hard to go through that. Uh, but during the divorce, in an attempt to change the split of assets between the two of them, uh, as part of her argument in court, Elaine stated that because Buck had never had bottom surgery, that he was not a real man. Because in order to be a real man, you have to have a penis. And because gay marriage was not legal at the time, uh, she attempted to say that their marriage was never valid because it was a marriage between two women. And essentially, that if someone does not have a penis, they cannot be considered a man. As you might imagine, this is an incredibly, incredibly transphobic uh, and harmful take to make ever, um, but especially in a legal proceeding like a divorce. Uh, and it's instances and interactions like this that contribute to things like the anti-trans legislature that we're seeing now. It's all of these little cases where from people who were outright transphobic, terrible people, to people who were just put in a difficult situation that involved a trans person and decided to use transphobia and homophobia to their benefit in that situation. All of these little interactions legally are what build up and create precedent and allow for a lot of the really scary anti-trans legislature we're seeing happening right now across America. And the trans community was really hurt when this happened. Here's an excerpt um, from an open letter to Elaine Angel written by a queer and trans couple uh, discussing the ways in which this decision was really harmful to them. Uh, and if you want to read the whole thing, I will link it uh, down in the comments below. Now, I reached out to Elaine personally a couple years ago, and I emailed her asking her if she would be willing to apologize publicly for having done this um, and, and just give some accountability and some closure to the trans community. Uh, I even suggested with the upcoming release of the new copy of the Piercing Bible to commit to donating a portion of the proceeds to the Transgender Legal Defense Fund um, just to kind of, you know, help out and give back. Uh, and... 
I was told in my email interactions with her that her relationship with Buck Angel had been abusive and it was too difficult for her to speak about it and she didn't feel comfortable giving any kind of public statement or apology at this time, uh, but she would think about donating. Um, to my knowledge, no donations have ever been made uh, and no public apology has ever been made. Now, I originally wasn't going to make this video uh, because I have had my own personal interactions with Elaine uh, and they have not always gone uh, super great. Uh, I will be the very first to own that in a private forum for body piercers, I came at Elaine probably much harder than I should have about this issue. Uh, I was... As a trans person, and at that time I was just in the process of coming out as non-binary, uh, I was very, very upset by the fact that this was done and the fact that it seemed like the whole piercing industry was willing to just brush it under the rug and everyone was saying, oh, well, divorce is really hard. Oh, well, this person was abused. And I was saying, but we can't allow for this. Like, this is going to lead to to worse transgender legislature and lead to discrimination against trans people and this is not okay. Uh, and at the time a lot of folks told me that I was overreacting and I will acknowledge that I, I was out of line. I definitely came in a lane too hard but a lot of folks were like you're overreacting, they're not going to come for trans rights, like it's just a divorce case, what does it matter? Well fast forward uh, a couple years now, and we are seeing a record amount of anti-trans legislature happening all over America. We are seeing politicians and leaders give open calls for harassment and mistreatment of transgender individuals. Uh, and it was everything that trans people were trying to warn folks about years ago. And cases like this and instances like this do contribute to that transphobic legislature. That being said, I've gotten a lot of hate for being outspoken about Elaine and about the Piercing Bible and about this. Uh, and for my own mental health as a non-binary person, I have taken a step back from speaking about it because it is a really difficult subject for me to broach and it is really difficult the amount of hate I've gotten for it. However, Elaine taught some classes at APP conference this year during which she insisted on using the terms male and female body piercing uh, and said that it's because that's what biologically those parts are. Um, and it was just a continuation of the rhetoric that was used in the divorce case that if you have to, that you have to have a penis to be a man or a vulva to be a woman. And that those are the only two ways that she seems to think that these people can exist. And it just shows that that transphobic rhetoric was not just a thing that was used in a divorce case or a thing that was used in a hard time, but something that's still prevalent in her work and in her teachings today. And because of this, uh, those classes were really triggering for a lot of trans folks who attended conference. And I got this message from someone who I met at conference, uh, who I spent a lot of time with and who is a dear new friend, asking me to speak out about this subject uh, because it has been weighing on them so heavily since conference. And I feel that since I do have a platform, I do have the ability to speak out about this and bring more awareness to this. Uh, and it is the least that I can do with the platform that I've been given. Now, I want it to be clear that I'm not making this video because I think we should cancel Elaine Angel uh, or anything like that. I am not honestly a huge fan of cancel culture in a lot of situations, and I would rather all of this be a call in rather than a call out. I don't want to see Elaine canceled and I think the work that she's done for the industry and the work that she's tried to do with the Piercing Bible is admirable. What I would love to see would be an official statement of apology acknowledging the harm that using this language and insisting on these things has caused to the trans and non-binary community within the piercing industry and the harm that it causes to clients. And I think donating a portion of the funds of the newest printing of the Piercing Bible to the Transgender Legal Defense Fund or a similar trans charity that helps trans people in the fight against anti-trans legislature that's happening right now would also be an amazing step in the right direction. But given the current political climate and the current anti-trans attacks happening all over the country on a massive scale, 
And given the ways in which the piercing community is so deeply enmeshed in queer and trans culture, not to mention the fact that Elaine has often advertised herself specifically to work on trans people, uh, and is therefore specifically profiting off of trans bodies, I think it is absolutely so crucial, given those factors and given the current climate surrounding trans legislature, that an apology be issued for this and accountability be taken. This will allow all of the trans folks and clients and piercers in this industry who've been harmed by this, the opportunity for closure, the opportunity for healing, and now more than ever, we need cisgendered women to stand with the trans community and stand alongside them and use their voices and their presence and their influence and their privilege to help protect trans lives. It's so incredibly important that these allies stand up right now and help with this. And I think if Elaine is serious about being an ally and serious about caring for the trans community, a simple apology and accountability and a donation of profit after how much she has profited off of trans bodies and advertising to trans clients is a very small thing to do. In the meantime, I do not suggest purchasing the Piercing Bible until these steps have been taken. I would instead suggest donating the money you would spend on that book to trans charities and especially the Trans Legal Defense Fund to help folks who are fighting against anti-trans legislature currently. It is my sincerest hope to see this change and to see the industry change to where trans folks don't have to go to conference and worry about misgendering language and incorrect language being literally taught in classes by people with a history of transphobic actions. We talk all the time in body piercing about making mistakes because body piercers are only human and mistakes do happen. Uh, and we say all the time that it is not the hallmark of a great piercer to never make a mistake. It's the hallmark of a great piercer how they handle a mistake when they make it. Do they correct the thing that went wrong with their piercing or do they let the client leave with a bad piercing and make excuses? I think the same can be said for this situation as well. Mistakes have been made and folks will continue to make mistakes. It happens. But rather than bury our heads in the sand and refuse to apologize or continue making the same mistake and continue being uninclusive, it's very easy to handle that mistake the way we handle it in the piercing room. Own up to what went wrong and correct it. That way our clients receive the best service possible. And that way we can create an industry that is as inclusive as possible. And that comes with calling in, not calling out, holding people accountable for their mistakes, but also holding folks accountable for their growth. And I sincerely hope that's what the outcome ends up being with Elaine. And I look forward to a time period where I can make a follow-up video with, from this, talking about an apology made, efforts made to correct things, and to make this industry more inclusive for trans and queer clients and piercers who have for so long been an instrumental part of this industry. My only other ask is that you please be respectful in these comments uh, and with how you go about it. Please don't send Elaine Angel a bunch of hate. That is not the goal of this video. Um, if you want to ask her to apologize, if you want to join trans and queer voices who are calling for apology and accountability, you can. Um, but this should not be an excuse to send hate or harassment to anyone uh, because that is not how we learn. That is not how we grow. That is not how we hold space for someone to do better. Uh, so I am hoping that this conversation can be a gracious one where we allow room for change and growth. And just in closing to my friend who sent me that message and to others I've spoken with about this from conference, please know that you are loved, that you are valid, and that you are enough of a man exactly the way that you are. And there is nothing that anyone, no matter how important they are in this industry, can say to take that away from you. You are valid, and I care about you more than you will ever know.